Welcome to College Cost 101, Part 3, Estimating Your Costs. Tonight, or today, we're going to talk about uh, what your expected family, family contribution means and, and how to calculate that. We're going to use uh, some net price calculators to estimate what your cost might be at some different colleges. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about the different types of net price calculators. Now, in the first video, we talked about merit aid, which is really good news for a lot of great students out there and, and families, gives you a lot of hope. In the second video, we talked about the cost of attendance, how to distinguish between just tuition or tuition and fees versus the total cost of attendance and kind of wrap your arms around what some sort of baseline anchor costs are. And in this one, we're going to get into the details a little bit more. Now, right away, I just I just want you to bear with me. This is going to get uh, a little a little slow at times, just kind of going through some calculators and things like that. Um, I don't know, put on some soft jazz in the background, whatever you need to do, but let's work through this in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes, and you're going to know a lot more. And it's always, always better to have some information and know versus just kind of sticking your head in the sand and then hoping that this will work out because it's not just going to work out if we stick our head in our sand just like retirement you got to plan for this and if it has to be kind of one of these types of things where occasionally it's scary scary i can't look uh and you do that i guess you can do that as well but we're all in this together right so let's just jump in and just a quick review of financial aid you know it comes in in all sorts of different flavors need based merit based and we can also break it into the three major types the things that you uh, don't pay back the grants and scholarships which can be either need based or merit based loans um, which are always need based and then work study and that's always need based as well work study is a part-time job that you earn loans obviously you you pay back so if we look at this term, expected family contribution, or the acronym is EFC, um, the number of colleges used to calculate financial aid. So this is just one step in the process. This is not gonna be a final determination of what you're going to pay, but this is something that uh, colleges are going to use. You're gonna go through one of a couple of different portals to figure this out. Uh, one of which is the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And you're gonna go through this process the year before your student goes off to college and, and every year thereafter. It's gonna feel like, do we have to do this again? Yes, you have to do this again. And then the colleges are all gonna get this EFC number and then they're going to use that to calculate your potential financial aid. So again, the EFC number is not what I get in scholarships. It's not how much we have to pay. It's just one step in the process. Now, there are different ways to calculate the EFC based on what the college you're applying to is using. Um, if they're just using what we call the federal methodology, that means they're just pulling the numbers off of the FAFSA. That's the most common by far. Uh, most public schools, almost all public schools use that. Some, um, some private schools use it. A lot of privates are going to use what's called the CSS profile. That's something put out by the college board. We're not going to run those numbers today, but we'll deal with that at a later date. Um, and then there's also this third one that is, is fairly rare. There's only a, about 30 schools that use what's called a consensus methodology. So we're just going to focus on using the FAFSA and go that way. The things that the FAFSA is going to be asking are essentially, how much do you make? You parents, how much do you make uh, or earn? Um, and then what do you have? And they're not going to be including uh, retirement income. They're not going to be including the value of your home. Okay, and then students, what do you what do you make and what do you have saved? Those kinds of things. And two major factors that can change. Well, they're not going to change your EFC as much as they're going to change the the aid that you get back. Um, are the size of your household, how many kids you have, and then how many of those kids are going to be in college? Because actually, that can really change your EFC number. So we're just going to run some sort of basic numbers, and you're going to see how this works. So the two that we're going to look at, I'm going to show you one first that we're, we're not going to go through because it just, it takes a little bit longer. It'd be a little bit long for a video, but um, the federal government has something that they call the FAFSA forecaster. Let's just take a quick look at that. Um, when you're doing anything federal government, make sure you're going to the, the fafsa.ed.gov and, and not the uh, fafsa.com or something. There's some kind of scam websites. So I'm not going to go through this, but this will take you probably 10 minutes or so to walk through this 
and uh, parents have your taxes next to you. Um, they're going to ask things about like adjust, adjusted gross income, uh, line 43 on your 1040. They're going to ask how much you paid in federal taxes and things like that. And you also want to know what your student did for that as well. So we're going to click out of the FAFSA forecaster, but this is a good, great place to start. And we're going to use um, a more simplified version that the College Board uh, comes up with. College Board, these are the guys that do the SAT exam, the people that do that, and AP exams and, and a bunch of other things as well, including the CSS profile. So this is just kind of saying, hey, here's what the EFC is, and we're just going to walk you through this process and don't hold us accountable for this, um, but this is going to be one step in the process of finding out what your net price is. Okay, sounds good. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask some questions to determine whether your student is a dependent or independent student. Now, I don't know where everyone's coming from and everyone's family situation, but the vast majority, extremely rare uh, cases uh, of students that, that we work with that are independent. Independent doesn't mean that I'm going to pay my own way as an 18 year old. Independent really means that I'm, you know, older than I think it's 24. I've been in the military. I have a child. Other people rely on me for, you know, primary source of income, things like that, that aren't going to apply to most of the families that we're working with and most of the kids in high school across America, to be quite honest. So uh, I, I'm going to leave all of these as no, you know, this ask about age, orphans and things like this. Obviously, you need, you need to read those. But in most cases, um, none of these are going to apply to your student, which means your student's going to be a dependent student. And even if you say, look, Johnny's paying for everything, and that's the arrangement we have, we're, we're helping him find the right college, but we're not going to help him pay for it, that doesn't mean that he's independent. That means he's still dependent. If you are independent, that's going to, it's a total game changer in terms of, of how the colleges are going to look at the financial aid for you. So then the next one is they're going to ask us to pick a formula and, and we mentioned these briefly. I'm just going to have, um, we're just going to run the federal methodology. So we're going to pretend that we're filling out the FAFSA. Okay. And the next step then is going to be uh, just a few basic questions. This is a simplified version of it. Let's say parents are married and there are five kids and um, let's live in oh, Connecticut. Sounds good. Okay, a couple of questions now. Students age, uh, students 17, and we need to plug in. Um, I'm just going to use some kind of random things here for two parents. And a couple of uh, brothers or sisters. And this has to match up with with what I claimed in terms of the number of uh, people in the family before. And are they in college? No, none of them are in college. I've got uh, a younger brother, younger sister, that kind of thing. Good. Okay. So then um, what's your adjusted gross, your adjusted gross income? Let's just plug in um, 150,000 for the parents. And let's say the student made $2,000 from part-time or, or summer work. And let's just split this equally between two parents. Um, and then some of these are, you know, you need to read these, but in this case, none of them are going to apply, no combat pay, nothing like that. Income tax is paid. I'm not an accountant, but let's just say we paid 30,000 and our student didn't have to pay anything, didn't make enough. And we have, let's say we've got $10,000 in just a, a savings fund and the student has uh, maybe they saved half of that from the summer job. Here we go. Other real estate and investment equity, but not the student's home. So um, I, don't, I don't own another property. I just own my home. I'm paying off my home. So that's not going to be included in, in the FAFSA. The CSF profile will ask you about the value of your home and not just the value, kind of current market value of your home, but also what you what you owe on it. So they're going to figure that out, figure out how much equity you have in this. Um, I do have a business, but I'm going to pretend, pretend that I don't, and I don't have any of these. I don't own a farm, et cetera. So then I'm going to go through and I'm going to see my results. Okay. 
Hmm. All right, so parents' contribution for student. So this is the, the FAFSA is saying, um, hey, we think you are going to be able to come up with uh, $20,552 next year. We don't know if you have it saved. We don't know if you need to borrow it, but that's what we think that you should come up with for one year of college, for your student's first year of college. Uh, student, we're gonna ask you to come up with 200, so there's a combined $20,752. That's your total estimated federal methodology contribution. That's your EFC number, okay? So just over $20,000. Now, I ran some numbers before and they were, they were slightly different and I plugged some of those in. And so if we go to the next slide, all right, so this is, this is a screenshot of the type of thing we just saw, and this is a little bit higher, so just over $24,000. So in really, really simplified terms, here's what I do with that EFC number. Um, colleges take their, their cost of attendance and they subtract your expected family contribution. Right, and after you, you fill out the FAFSA, you can, you can send the results out to the different colleges where you're applying. So let's say College A says, our cost of attendance is, this must be an in-state public university, 25,890, and uh, here are the numbers that I ran before, 24,260, so the difference is 1,690. Okay, so that's your need. That doesn't mean that you're, they're just gonna knock that off the, the top like a used car, that means that's your need, and they may say, um, we'll give you a work study job for $1,690. How's that? Uh, you can work at a library. Or they might say, that's it, you can come up with that uh, somehow, or here's a loan, or here's a grant, whatever it might be. Um, college B, probably a private college, $52,500. And so now, you know, we can only come up with about half, or our expected family contribution is a little bit less than half. So therefore, my need is a lot greater. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because that doesn't mean that they're just going to hand over $28,240, right? Um, maybe, maybe you're gonna get more than that in merit-based aid. This is just based on need, not merit. And notice that that calculator that we used didn't have anything about grades uh, or test scores, okay? So that could be uh, the case. I, I might have this already. Uh, College B then is probably going to put together a financial aid package that includes uh, loans, grants or scholarships, and work study. Okay, so net price, financial aid formula, this is something where we have to kind of wait until we get something back from the college to determine exactly what it's going to be. And it's a little bit frustrating because I just want to know the price right now, but I may not know the price right now. But this is getting us closer. So then what we do as a next step is we take these net price calculators, and that's a tool that every college has one. Some of them uh, build their own. Most of them are, they, they buy it from a third party software company. And so you'll see several that look like really similar, okay? And they ask the same types of questions. And, and it's something we can use where we can plug in our EFC numbers or some other financial aid information. And the best ones, I think, are the ones that ask about academics. What's your grade point average? What's your SAT or ACT score? Those kinds of things, because those are going to factor in possible merit aid as well. And remember that we can look at that just by looking up those merit uh, matrix or matrices that we looked at for Arizona, Arizona State things like that. So let's look at a, a wide range of these. We're gonna look at four of them. These, I'm not trying to get you to go to these colleges and I'm not gonna make fun of any of these colleges. I'm gonna make fun of one of the net price calculators a little bit, but, but no, no harm. So this is, this is a really common first screen. This is Washington College. It's a, a small, wonderful private liberal arts college uh, in Maryland, not too far out of DC. Got really great poli-sci program. Um, the school I put in front of a number of students. So I'm agreeing to the terms that basically say, this is not a done deal, okay? We're just talking about this. All right, net price calculator. So do I, I plan to apply? Yeah, I'm gonna apply. And, and even if you think you would get no aid, you should always apply for financial aid. No, Bill Gates should apply for financial aid. He might get a Bill and Melinda Gates uh, scholarship. Um, that would be called nepotism. How old are you? Um, I'm gonna pretend that I'm the student. I am 17. I am not married, I'm not even dating, I'm kind of hanging out with some, but that's about it. Are the primary source of income? No, I am not. I cannot even afford my own gas money. How many people in my family? There are five of us. Um, I'm gonna be the only one heading off to school. And I don't know exactly what mom and dad make, but they make uh, over $100,000 combined. Cool. So then it says, hey, is this what you meant? Yeah, that's what I meant, okay? And here we go. So Washington College. now. 
this is just a little bit disappointing, to be quite honest. Sometimes they don't update these, and, and so I would probably run back to the Washington College website and look to see what their current or projected for 2021 cost of attendance is, because it could be a few thousand dollars off of this. But anyways, we'll take this as it is. So they're talking about tuition and fees, their room and board, and, and books and other supplies, et cetera. So they're, they're giving us an honest, this is probably what their actual cost of attendance was for uh, 16, 17. So it's $58,506. From the numbers that we just plugged in, they're saying, hey, we think we'll probably give you about uh, a little over $20,000 in grant aid. And that's merit and need-based aid, okay? As it says, includes both merit and need-based grant and scholarship aid from federal, state, or local governments or the institution. Now, the way that they're positioning this is grant aid. They're not talking about loans or work studies. Some of them do break it down into that and say, well, you probably qualify for a, a Stafford loan or a PLUS loan, those kinds of things, right? But this is just saying, we think we're going to give you 20 grand. So we think you're going to need to come up with uh, 37,000, almost 38,000 like that. And maybe there are other scholarships, maybe there are other loan possibilities, et cetera, like that. But this just gives me a really quick idea of what it might cost for my son or daughter to go to, to Washington College. Let's go back and let's look at another one. Now, remember we looked at Ohio Wesleyan before when we did the cost of attendance exercise. So, uh, oops, I've got to go back and kind of restart this thing and let's do, well, we can do this. I'll show you how to get there from the real thing. Let's go to admissions and financial aid scholarships and tuition. And we were on this page before, and we saw this wonderful scholarship, the Brands Rookie Scholarship. It makes me into a baseball fan. And here we go, net price calculator. And I usually, I usually just Google the net price calculator. It's often faster to get there. Um, so uh, I wonder if I can, well, I'm gonna throw in some numbers here. Let's say this, student's marital status, single, uh, no. Oh, okay, here we go. Is the student's expected family contribution available? Um, yes. And so, well, we ran two sets of numbers. I'm going to use that uh, 24000 that I originally had, and it's going to say, okay, here are your net price results. Now, I was just on this calculator before, and I think, I think it saved some information um, from before. So it had asked me about my GPA and what state I live in and uh, SAT, ACT scores, and things like that. So there were a few screens before this, and I apologize for that, but let's see what we've got. Now, this is kind of rare. They usually don't break this down into uh, first year, second, third, and fourth. I'm just going to focus on the first. It's good to be aware, though, their projecting costs are going to go up. So tuition and fees, room and board, total direct costs, and then total indirect. Here we go. So total cost, Ohio Westland. So I walk onto campus, uh, I guess, two years from now, fall of 2021 is what I told it, $63,580. And boom, right away, they're saying, hey, based on what you plugged in a couple of screens ago, um, you're going to qualify for our Branch Rickey Scholarship, and that's 30 grand, and you're welcome. And then you're also going to uh, qualify for this Ohio Wesleyan grant. I'm not sure what that is, but that's that's nice. So 32000 so they're taking 63580 subtracting 32000 estimated net price just over 31,000, okay? So basically in half, but it's still a lot of money. And, and then this one is really nice. I, I, like this, um, I like this net price calculator quite a bit. Uh, student loans, well, you'd probably qualify, they're saying for a direct subsidized loan and an, an unsubsidized loan very quickly. We'll talk about loans later, but subsidized means that the federal government is gonna pick up the tab on the interest. And so until you get done with college and about six months out, you don't have to make any payments and the interest does not accrue. So it's just sort of on hold and then you have to start paying back once you get a job. Unsubsidized, you don't have to pay back while you're in college, but the interest is going to accrue. And then they're saying, we'd probably um, give you a job if you wanted to work at the library or cafeteria or something like that for, you could earn up to $2,000 over the year. So now they're subtracting that, um, your remaining cost. And then they say, oh, and by the way, you can just take out a, what's called a, a plus loan, a parent loan for, for that. So it's a little bit misleading to say like, wow, all my costs are covered. No, all my costs are not covered. Um, these, this money I have to pay back and this I have to earn. So 
I'm actually more interested in this price than what happens down at the bottom. But this helps me a lot. And I can think about, you know, does that fall into our budget? Is it too high? Is it too low? Uh, do we need to look at, you know, maybe I should go back and see if uh, a higher SAT score would get me more money or higher GPA or, or, or whatever it might be. So that's a, that's a very good net price calculator. Let's get out of that one. And thanks very much, Ohio Wesleyan. And then let's go back and let's look at two more. These are gonna be a little bit more, uh, a little, little quicker. Creighton net price calculator. Okay, here we go, right off the bat. Hey, what's your EFC number? I'm gonna say 24,000. By the way, moms and dads, the first time I did um, an estimate on my net price, I thought my laptop was broken or something like that. And my EFC number, I'm like, you're insane. I don't have that kind of money laying around. Um, so I thought that was just whack. They're not saying that you have this all saved and this may not be as accurate as the final one, but it's one of those kind of gulp moments for a lot of families. Just be aware of that going in. Maybe it'll work out better for you. So high school GPA, okay, 4.0 or greater. So uh, Creighton is doing weighted GPAs. It can get a little funky. Let's just say I've got a 3.8 weighted GPA and I took the ACT and um, now I was a little short of that. I got a 28. Okay. Uh, calculate. Huh. So this is, this is pretty quick. It's, I like that it's asking for my EFC number. It doesn't ask too many questions about how much I earned or saved or whatever. It just gives me that option to say, do you already know this piece of information? Yes. Plug it in. And then they're asking for the academic information as well. Now, Let's go ahead and look at this, and I'll talk about Creighton as an example for a second. So tuition, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Estimated cost, um, 55000 We think we're going to give you 16000 And so then cost minus free money, um, interesting term, 39000 And then just like Ohio Wesleyan did, they're saying you might qualify for, for this loan or this loan and, and actually an institutional loan as well. So that helps me understand that cost. Now Creighton's a good example of a, a school that Creighton doesn't post their uh, merit scholarships. There are some schools, uh, some of their competitors, and a lot of other schools that, that do. They're like, if you, you, know, you have this and this, you're going to get this much. Creighton doesn't do that, but I know from working with a lot of families that have students who, who have gone to Creighton or have considered Creighton, that's what I would ballpark in terms of, of kind of blending the merit and need-based aid for sort of the middle class suburban family with a student with pretty good numbers. I would tell them, I think you're gonna get somewhere between, I don't know, maybe 14 on the low end, 18, 20 is gonna be really high from Creighton. There's some other scholarship opportunities as well. So they're gonna take a big chunk out of that. Um, it's not gonna come down to your in-state public costs, but they are gonna take a big chunk out of that. And it's a wonderful institution. Love it, love Creighton, love almost everything about it. And um, so if that's in your, in your budget and that's where you wanna go, be a Blue Jay. Um, I know a lot of great Blue Jays and former Blue Jays, et cetera. That's just another net price calculator, okay? And then here's one that's really quick, kind of down and dirty, Aurora University out in Aurora, Illinois. First year student net price calculator, okay? And let's get started. I like that attitude. Now they've got a campus up here in Wisconsin. We're not paying attention to that one. We're using the one down there. What's your high school GPA? Um, uh, I got a three, four. Okay. What is your, I haven't taken the SAT. Uh, did I take the ACT? Yeah, um, I rocked to 24. Okay. Do I have an immediate family member? N nope, nobody else in my family's ever gone. Um, no alums, state of legal residents. Um, I don't know, Idaho. That sounds cool. View results. Hmm, okay, so the James E. Creamy Presidential Scholarship and it's renewable, which is cool. So 14,000 plus an out-of-state grant. So some private schools do this out-of-state grant. I think just to, to lure people in from either specific states or they're just saying, hey, come on in, the doors are open. Um, so that's pretty nice. That's 15,500 with a 3.4 and a 24. That's pretty solid. And this one, obviously, I can go back and I can, you know, I can do the quick calculations. Well, what if I bump that up? I went up to a 27. Is it going to change at all? And I can play with this thing all day. And oh, yeah, actually, it went up a little bit. So 
time, I want to consider taking the ACT again. So that's what net price calculators look like, okay? They are very helpful documents or tools, and they help me understand probably kind of, sort of, what my costs might be. They at least help me dial in a little bit more. Um, next steps, that's not what I wanted to show. This is what I wanted to show. So let's just jump in and start using these. And, and students, you're more than welcome to do this too. I think this is probably more of the, the parent uh, thing, kind of the person that has the, the checkbook in the family that does the, that does the numbers, pays the bills. You're probably the person that's going to spend uh, a half an hour on a Sunday afternoon doing this, but it's going to be a great half hour, um, or at least it's going to produce some great results. So use either or both of those EFC estimators, the College Board one that I showed you, or you can use um, you can use the FAFSA forecaster, and we've got uh, a PDF with with links to both of those, and and. Plug in some different numbers. Have your taxes available because that's going to help, and and see what your range is, and maybe find the you know the the average of those, and use that as your EFC number. And then you know use those same colleges that you did the exercise for cost of attendance. Run the numbers for some of those, um, or or any of them, and just play around with these a little bit. Really, in in a half hour, a half hour is not that much time. You're gonna you're gonna know so much more about how these things work and what your potential costs might be. And, and we're gonna work through the budget in other steps and we're gonna work through what I call models of shared responsibility. Um, it feels like we have to take so many little baby steps, but I think these are really important baby steps. Knowing that merit aid is available, knowing about cost of attendance, knowing about expected family contribution and then how to use that in net price calculators. My gosh, guys, if you, if you are doing this, you are so far ahead of most of the families out there, and I wish that they would take these steps too, because there's a lot of great information out there, but you have to get kind of used to doing it and, and comfortable. And to be honest, when I, see, when I see the net price calculator, and I use these things all the time when I'm doing you know, college searches for different families, when I see the net price calculator, like the Washington College one, I'm like, ah, it's that one because it's not gonna give me really great information. Um, when I see ones like Ohio Wesleyan or Creighton for that matter, I'm, I'm like, thanks guys, I appreciate that because I get to plug in my, my academic numbers and that can make a huge difference. And, and Aurora, the down and dirty, <laughs> what do you got for a GPA? What are your test scores? And then I can play with those all day and, and come back to students and say, here would be a great option. You're already getting this. And you know, if you did some more work in this area, you could get up to that. And then, and then I have control as a student, as a family. I have control of that process. One of those cornerstones of you know, our college cost cornerstones is that cost is not fixed. That's also one of the most frustrating. Again, this makes buying an airline ticket seem really, really transparent, but you're not going to know all your costs until you know, until you hear back from the colleges, but you can, you can estimate and you can predict and you can use ballpark figures and you can not freak out when the parent at the soccer game gives you some bad information about something because you're like, no, 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 no. That's not what Tom said. I know these things. I know what the cost of attendance should be at a public in-state university and I know how much uh, my student is going to get from a private college and all those kinds of things. So you see my point. Knowledge is power. All right jump onto some of those uh, net price calculators, play around with that a little bit, uh, have some fun, treat yourself to something nice after that. Take care.